Hello and good day everyone. I would like to talk about something very important with respect to commentary solutions for Power BI available in the market today. Now, take this example where I have a matrix and I have a few slices or filters on the left of my report. Now, based on the selection of these filters, the values and data listed by the matrix is going to change. Now, I've already pre-selected some items and I've gone ahead and entered some comments, right? For example, I've entered a row level comment in the separate column, right? And remember that, you know, these comments do not come from the data model, right? These are comments entered directly in the visual. I have also entered a cell level comment, a row header level comment, a column header level comment, and so forth. Now see what happens when I change the selection of these uh, values. So let's say I change this to economy, you will see that the numbers change, right? But the comments kind of uh, continue to stick around, right? Even when I change the year, the same thing happens. Now, the reason is that this commentary that I've entered in the visual is unaware of what's happening outside this universe, outside the universe of this visual. It doesn't understand the context set by the filters or the slicers. Now, it's different if these comments are coming from your data model, because in that case, it'll behave like any other uh, category or dimension. So for comments coming from the data model, if you change something, it's automatically going to change. But wherever you allow the users to enter comments, it's not going to be context sensitive, which makes the entire solution static. Meaning I can present this to the user and allow the user to enter comments, but I should not allow the users to change the selection because these are really static comments and they don't change as per the change in context that you set here through the filters, which kind of, you know, makes the solution highly limited. But uh, we at InfoRiver have cracked this code. So I'm going to show you how using a standard InfoRiver matrix visual, you can allow your users to enter notes and comments that are really context sensitive, they're aware of what's going on with the filters and slices. And I'm going to show you how to set it up in a few steps, right? And all of this doesn't require you to take help from your IT team. Uh, you can do this on your own. And what's even great is that you're not required to have a database, a server or a write back service in order to get it up and running. You can do this in a standalone visual. Now, before I show you how to do it, let me show you the end product right here. So here I have a sample report where I have gone ahead and implemented this. So you see some row level comments here. Uh, you see some cell level comments, row header level comments and so forth. Now just observe what happens when I change the year here, right? So when I change the year, the values change and so do my notes, right? Uh, similarly, when I change the class, uh, things are going to change, right? So this commenting solution that I'm showing you is highly dynamic and it changes because it's aware of the filter slicer context. And again, these are comments entered in the visual, not coming from your data model. Let me now switch to Microsoft Power BI desktop. Now I have a work in progress version of the report where I have created everything, but I've not made the notes or comments context sensitive, right? For example, if I go and type in my new comment, and then save it. And if I go and change these filters, right, that commentary is going to hang around even though the data value changes. Now I'll show you how to implement this, uh, the context of our comments. So let's get into the focus mode in the InfoRiver visual um, and click on display. I go to the miscellaneous tab and scroll all the way down and you will see something called filter slash slicer context, which is currently set to none. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a DAX measure that always passes on the context to InfoRiver visual, right? But InfoRiver auto generates the DAX for you depending on what context you would like to track. For example, if I click on I, it's gonna ask me which categories do I want this visual to track? These are basically the filters that we use in the report, right? And I know that we're using three filters in this report. First one is year which comes from the table uh, Contoso time. And uh, sorry about that. The second category is class that comes from Contoso sales. And the third one is 
country, which again comes from Contoso hyphen sales, right? So all I need to do now is go ahead and click on generate DAX and it's going to generate the DAX script for me. And using this DAX script, I have to now go and create a measure here. So let me just close it. Uh, in fact, I've already created the measure for you under the name filter context. In fact, it's the same script. So once you create this DAX measure, we need to go back and assign this DAX measure to the visual. So, and this is the way by which uh, the visual can know what has been set in these three visuals or slices. So let me scroll down and you will see this field called others OM. I need to drag and drop this field called filter context, which we just created using the DAX measure, using the DAX script. Now, it adds it as a separate column, but don't worry about it right now. Go to focus mode again, click on display, and go to miscellaneous, come down. And now when you click on the drop down, you will see this new field pop up, right? Just go ahead and select that. And this extra field shown in the visual will disappear, right? So now close it and then come back to the main report. Now uh, I can enter a new comment, right? Let me enter it here, right? My new context aware comment, and then I go and click it. And now when I change the selection, see what happens, right? Uh, Info River understands that that comment that I just entered is only for this context or combination of year, class, and country, right? And I can also go and create uh, cell level comments, row header level comments, etc. And it's going to behave the exact same way. Now, just in a few minutes, you are able to create slicer and filter aware comments in Microsoft Power BI without using any database, server, or write-back service. And if you're asking me, you know, which InfoRiver edition should I use? InfoRiver, as most of you know, comes in two editions. The standalone matrix edition, which I just used to create context aware comments. This is why you don't need a server or service and it's completely Power BI certified. And to implement context aware commenting, you need to use the notes feature. The only thing is the visual does not write back data because the comments are stored in the PBX file. Now, in Forever Enterprise, on the other hand, we recommend that you use the commenting feature so that you get the ability to uh, write back. Now, finally, if you have any questions, uh, go and visit our blog on the same topic, comments with filter slicer, context awareness in Power BI. We have pretty much given you a step-by-step -step method of uh, how to create context-sensitive commentary in uh, Microsoft Power BI. Thanks a lot uh, for being here. I hope you liked it. Have a great day.